and having fun and, and squirreling around because it, it, by that point in the film, we'd gotten used to improvising a lot of what we did. And almost everything you see there uh, was lightly scripted, but it's pretty much just fresh takes, right. first takes, and, uh, and whatever happened, Randall went with it. There was a mistake and he liked it and laughed. He said, it stays in the film. Yeah. And my favorite scene was the slumber party for the same reason, because we were having such a blast. And it was so fun to torture Olivia, because <laughs> we real, the pink ladies really were sort of, in real life, the bad girls. And in real life, Olivia really was kind of like a goody two-shoes. And so, so we got to, you know, pierce her ears and get her drunk, just like we would have in real life. And it was just fabulous. So. My favorite scene was, uh, you're the one that I want, because Olivia, I wasn't sure if Olivia, because she is like a goody two-shoes, if she could be the bad Sandy at the end. I, I just was worried that it wouldn't work. And uh, we were shooting the driving, and she came dressed in the makeup to show me that makeup and hair. And she was walking toward me, and I, <clears throat> I was seeing this blonde come out, a backlit blonde coming. Who is that? You know, Nobody knew who it was until she got up real close. I said, Olivia! And then we knew it would work. Yeah. Round of applause for that. Love the behind the scenes insight. Thank you for that. We've got another question up at the top right at microphone four. Their, their friends had these real names. There was a Sandy Dombrowski, and there was a, 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 a Danny Zuko. And I believe that the Pink Ladies were really a group of girls. But Pink Lady was a popular cocktail in the 1950s. And the jackets that we wore in the Broadway show had the cocktails with, on the back of them. Do you remember that? So the name Pink Lady is really, I think, referencing these ladies' cocktails that, that, uh, that no high school girl ever really drank. But I think that's where the Pink Lady's name came from. And the boys were called the Burger Palace Boys because it wasn't the Frosty Palace as it is in the movie, it was the Burger Palace, hence the Burger Palace book, and then it changed the t -birds. Great question, thank you. We're gonna go to microphone one, right down here. Hi, um, so I was wondering, have you kept any of the props or any of the costumes, and what have you kept? I'm, I'm wearing a, a belt buckle that Randall Kleiser and Pat Birch gave us as uh, closing gifts. It's, it's a, Matches the logo, the grease thing, and it says grease, and it's got oh, it's a... Zooming in. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so the answer is yes. And uh, during the uh, promotional period, Dinah and I actually went out on the road together to promote it. You went out by your Jamie. with Jamie, and you went out I went by, oh, myself. by yourself, and Dee went out by her something. Anyhow. Um, I went to the costume department and I got my jacket, I got uh, the, the pants, the jeans, and the squirt gun. And um, I still have my jacket, the squirt gun I think was taken from me, but I still have the, uh, the jacket and the, uh, the sneakers. That I often, during these uh, autograph signing shows, I exhibit, but I couldn't bring it with me this time, so, I yeah. got nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> Dee Dee got her jacket. Dee Dee kept, kept everything. everything. She, she, she got everything. She was so smart. She yeah. kept everything. She, she like knew. I was like, ah, that's over. Let's on to the next thing. I asked. I asked, but they said we have to hold on to all of this because there may be reshoots. Or a sequel. I or took a sequel. My, that's right. I took my jacket <laughs> and my niece, Karina, had a boyfriend who was Italian and he was cute and I gave it to him. <laughs> They split up three weeks later. <laughs> yeah, I think he's a senator now. <laughs> We've got a question here at microphone number two. Um, if you had the opportunity, would you play another character? I'll would we do what? Character. Would you play a different character other than your own? Is that right? Sandy, I would like to play Sandy. <laughs> uh, my answer would be no. Uh, because of the of the T Birds or Burger Palace Boys, Putsy is original to the movie. Yeah, there is right. no Putsy in the play. Right. It's in fact in the play, it's Duty is that character, and the Duty that you see is really Roger. the Sonny from the movie. No, he's Ro he, the Sonny is That's Roger, right. and the Duty it's, is is right. it's Sonny. very confusing. It really is. You have to see the play, and you'll completely get more confused. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
tried to tell me something. That's why she's a novelist. <laughs> Aren't you talking about that you would like being Marty? No, I'd love, I know, I would not want to play anyone else but Marty. Yeah. And I only wanted, I'm glad I'm Jan now because now that I look back at the movie when we made it, we all thought we were acting. And <laughs> now that I actually know who we turned out to be as human beings, we're just like these characters. <laughs> exactly. Nobody was, That's and we really thought true. we were yeah. acting, yeah. we were working our craft. <laughs> but we really were just these goofballs that we really are in real life and with the same kind of relationships. Yeah. And I really am kind of more like Jan than anybody else, I guess. Does anybody have a Twinkie? But you're not, <laughs> but you're not fat. Thank you. Got another question uh, up at. Good camera person here. Okay, so it goes kind of like this. Bracha, 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 with the new icana, with the brand new flavor. Oh, Sprite, tea, hay, germs, fast, 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 you sure are right. I got all four, you're dying to throw the pillow. <laughs> Tonight we're having a um, sold out screening. I wanted, uh, are any of you, do any of you have tickets? Yeah. Oh. yeah two, two people do. Yeah. Okay, all right. Just, oh, oh, just one. All right, oh a whole bunch of people. Let's see. Sing along as well, you said, right? Yes, yes, and unfortunately it's sold out, but, but I just thought maybe some of these people would, would be there. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, ladies, you'll probably recognize our next questions right over here from this beautiful pink lady. Give her a round of applause. She looks amazing. Oh, Betty. Um, thank you so much for all coming as well to the UK. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, were there any tricksters on set? Did anyone play any pranks? Um, what were they? I mean, no, no. Actually, the truth is, we were we were encouraged to play and trick in rehearsal by Randall who said, the scene doesn't seem to be working as written, why don't we go over here and let's re re restage it, rehearse it differently, you guys throw in what you want. Improv. And that's where the, the play and improv happened and, and the trickery, if there was some, occurred. Uh, I know when we saw that happen, we saw the scene in the bedroom with the girls evolve <laughs> and watch that, it was brilliant, between Randall and Pat. Um, so it all happened rather deliberately, we were directed. And we also had, uh, it kind of relates, but there was an element, uh, a, a bit of an homage to the Three Stooges. Randall is a huge Three Stooges fan, as am I. And we kind of put our heads together and thought, well, maybe Duty, Sonny, and Putsy were that way. And, and then you ordered some films from Columbia? Was it Columbia? Yes, and actually, you guys know how to do it still, don't you? Oh, I think we do. <laughs> the practice for tonight. Anybody want to see the I'll movies? make a mistake. <laughs> Michael is a work in progress with this. <laughs> so um, what, and those of you who are gonna see the thing tonight, is this is kind of like we did. So Rand will let us improvise. I mean, you remember in the campfire, the bonfire scene? Well, we did something like this. Do a split, give a yell, shake the tip for old right now. Guys. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, be cool. That's better. Yeah. You know, she looks just like uh, Stockard. Channing played Rizzo. Yeah. Lovely girl. Lovely girl. Thank you so much. We've got a question up here on the right to microphone four. Hiya. How much dough did he spend? <laughs> I'm washing my hands. <laughs> yes, I'm washing my hands. We've got a question here at microphone two on the right. Hi. Me favorite memory of working on the set? Me meeting Eve Arden. It was the first time like since I was in high school. <laughs> 30s, whatever I was, a principal actually liked me. And I don't know, most of you are younger than me, but 
uh, Eve Arden was, it was a tremendous show, the Eve Arden show, she's a principal of a high school. And, and with the casting of the film, every day, every scene was big. A Frankie Avalon, Joan Blondell, Sid Caesar. Sid Caesar, who else? Eddie Burns, yeah. uh, Jody Goodman, <clears throat> Alice, Alice Ghostly. Yeah. Every day there was someone, Sid yeah. Caesar, yeah. I'm telling you. My favorite. He was charming as hell. And by the end of when he left, you couldn't even get, he couldn't even get out the back door. And people. you know, John was responsible for me doing the movie because I had worked with him on Boy in the Plastic Bubble, and he asked for me to do Grease. It's all connected, so don't turn away. My, my favorite experience on the film was watching John and Olivia rehearse for the big dance scene and looking at them and going, oh my God, you know, and then seeing it all come together at the, when we shot it, it was just amazing. I think that, uh, I mean, I just loved working at every moment of that 15 weeks. But thinking back, I, I think filming, you're the one that I want. Understand that three weeks before we went before principal photography, we had rehearsed this like a play and then performed it for the people at the Paramount. But you're the one that I want. The producers never seem to be happy with the last song, which was all called All Choked Up, right? And all of a sudden, we're, we're out on the carnival set, and they bring out this new song called You're the One That I Want, that we are not really singing on. They had pre-recorded it. And I kept seeing John and Olivia fooling around going, What do I want? What do I want? You're the one that I want. And they were kidding, like, I guess in the recording studio, they found that fun to do. What are they doing? So we, at Pat Birch, and you, because you hadn't storyboarded this, you were I had flying not by seen, the I had not heard the song, I had not seen, the, didn't know what we were gonna do that day. They yeah. brought the song and we said, well, what do we do with this? And looked over and saw the carnival thing and said, well, how, why don't we go in there and shoot it? Right. It was all thrown together. Thrown like together that. like that? So fat. So fat, and Pat Birch choreographed it on the spot. And there, there's a moment before that where uh, I realized that, we all realized that John is now a jock. And there's that moment where he goes from, come on, you're kidding around, to wait a minute. You... So that moment, very good acting. Very, yeah. very, very good acting. You know, that, that moment was very good. But that we choreographed it on the spot and we did it and it came together like in hours. That's was that. You know when it really came together? When Olivia came out and you, and you were shooting her in that outfit, the whole place stopped. I mean, the, the extras, the crew, everybody just, oh my yeah. God, look at her. That, and they had to sew her into that costume. Is that true? Yeah, that is yeah, they true. sewed her into the costume. I, I, I have to say, I, Michael just reminded me, this man, and along with Bill Butler, our, our director of photography, knows how to make everybody look gorgeous. Every, every shot that in the man, film is makeup beautiful. He makes everybody look incredible. John, Olivia, to a T, and nobody does it better. Um, I, uh, my Too favorite random. moment was, for some reason I was on, this, on the lot, and I got to see Olivia being shot, uh, shooting, hopelessly devoted to you. And I knew at that moment, this is, she's gonna blow the roof off of the box office. This woman is amazing. And she was shooting, so gorgeous. Shooting that number was all done in one shot too, yeah. and, and we had just, that was done in one day, one, and, one camera. and one camera set up. So it, a lot of things in Greece were just improvised and thrown together. These two mooks steal my lunch bag, and I'm trying to get it back. And then one of them pushes me so hard, I fell into a rose bush. And, yeah, and I and I fell on my back, and I thought, well, certainly I'm going to hear Randall say cut. Oh shit. <laughs> he didn't say cut. He jumped out of the roses and keep going in the scene. And I asked him after, why didn't you do that? He said, I love mistakes. <laughs> I'm glad you kept going. And that's, that shot is in the film. And we provided him with mistake after mistake after mistake. So I pushed you in the bushes? Yeah, yeah you pushed me in the bushes. <laughs> so but didn't you take my lunch? My mother makes it every day on the first day of school. Yeah. That was later. I, I ate a lot in the movie, I guess. <laughs> You should see the film, it's fabulous. <laughs> We've got time for one final question of times. Whenever John does that first turn, I still catch my breath. And that's, I mean, oh, that's all I want to say. 
Uh, you know, when you say to do this, something like this, I think we somehow got this so right at the time that we did it that, well, in this group, none of us even wanted to touch Breach the Priest too, because it, it was what, you know, was what it was. And I think it, it became that for all, all the reasons we've been telling you. But I really think what makes people love it is that there is so much love among us. And that we re that it isn't corny, it's just pure, fun love. And it's the kind of love that everybody really recognizes and can respond to because we hopefully all have somebody we have that good a time with. And so I, I really don't think we, we, we got it. We're still, just by being here, it's almost like we're back doing it again. Yep. More than it would be if we had new scenes where now we're the grandparents of the greasers. <laughs> yes. And, you know, so, so I think, you know, we, we appreciate what we had enough to not be saying, you know, I want another helping. Although yeah. Marty would be a great grandmother, wouldn't she? <laughs> like still in really high heels and maybe like a leopard print pants or something and a cigarette. I, I don't know. Just to me, I, I could see that. Well, Dee Dee actually was, um, she came to all of us to put together what they call a Bible to do a real Greece sequel. And we all contributed to our stories. So that was attempted, it never came to be. But aside from that, to answer your question, for me, and I think for all of us too, this project is a gift that keeps on giving. There is nothing for me personally more fulfilling than you guys and what you made this. You're the other character in this piece. Your uh, appreciation for what we have done, your joy, and generation after generation after generation, because of the universality, I think, of the story, the gorgeousness of those two stars, John and Olivia, our gorgeousness and our camaraderie has made it what it is today. And we appreciate you so much. This, for, I mean, me personally, I have no idea. Imagine yourself standing up here, sitting up here after years of a career, having this deliciousness going on in your life. So uh, we thank you. Mic drop.